Hello. Today we're working on the fourth activity in the variables chapter of Learn to Code 2. This activity is called Seeking Seven Gems. And as the name suggests, our goal says we're supposed to collect exactly seven gems. And once we have seven gems, we're supposed to stop. So if we're going to collect seven gems, we're probably going to need a variable to keep track of uh, how many gems we have at any time. Uh, so uh, we'll do that. Let's go ahead right at the beginning here just so we don't forget and we'll declare a variable and um, let's call it gem counter and remember to declare a variable in Swift you say var var then you give the name of the variable gem counter and if we want to initialize it or set its initial value a good value in this case would be zero because we haven't collected any gems yet. Okay, now um, let's take a look at this puzzle. In the puzzle, there's a gem right in front of us and then it looks like he's blocked by these gray rocks here. Uh, and if we look everywhere else in the puzzle, I don't see another gem. Uh, but up at the top here, it says we have zero out of seven gems collected. So apparently this puzzle, uh, gems will appear from time to time at different places, even after we collect some. Okay. Now the other thing I notice is that uh, we really only have the option of walking forward uh, until we get blocked. Then maybe we can turn around and walk back until we get blocked by this cliff back here. We really only have this channel or this canyon that we can walk between. So let's run the code again and see where gems can pop up. Okay, so it looks like gems can pop up anywhere along this channel uh, at any time. So our strategy is probably to just keep walking back and forth along this channel, uh, turning around whenever we're blocked and collecting gems along the way and we should stop when we finally have seven gems okay so let's add that part in here there should be a while loop probably in here that says as long as our gem counter is less than seven we want to keep walking back and forth collecting gems okay so that says as long as our gem counter is less than seven we keep walking back and forth collecting gems when our gem counter or the number of gems that we've collected is equal to seven then we'll stop this while loop and we'll come down here at the end but since that's our goal to get exactly seven gems we'll just be done at that point so down here we know we can give ourselves a comment that says we know we must have seven gems here. We cannot get to this point here unless we have seven gems because otherwise we'll be stuck in this while loop, uh, whatever, doing whatever, trying to get to our seventh gem. Okay, now what does it mean to keep walking back and forth collecting gems? Well, uh, in here we could probably put a command that says move and collect gems move and collect gems we want to keep doing that over and over but there is no such thing as move and collect gems so we can add that function here move and collect gems and that will be a function so I need to put the keyword funk in front of that move and collect gems uh, really that's going to be just uh, we'll check if the uh, location we're on um, if the location we're on is on a gem if is on a gem equals true or we can just say if is on a gem because is on a gem is a uh, boo whoops something happened there is on a gem is on a gem itself is a boolean variable which is either true or false so if we're on a gem, then let's collect that gem. And after we collect the gem, we'll move forward. 
Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, now, that's not the only thing we want to do here. What did I forget to do? Well, uh, when we collect a gem, we need to remember that our gem counter is always going to represent the number of gems we have at any time. So as soon as we collect a gem, that's the place where we want to increment gem counter or add one to our gem counter. And the way we do that, of course, is to say gem counter plus one. That's going to be our new value for gem counter. So we're going to assign the result of the expression gem counter plus one. We're going to assign that back into gem counter. Gem counter equals whatever gem counter was before plus one. Okay? So there. Now move and collect gems says let's uh, look and see if we're on a gem. If we are, we're going to collect that gem, increment our gem counter, say we have one more gem, and then move forward. Okay, move forward after that. Okay, now uh, let's give that a try and see what happens here. We're not quite done yet, but let's just watch and see what happens at this point. So we'll run the code. Okay, two gems pop up in front of us. We collect it, we move forward. We collect it, then we move forward. Ah, but we're blocked now. We're blocked. Okay. So we can't always just keep, and he's going to keep trying to move forward here because he doesn't have his seven gems yet. So he's going to keep trying to move and collect gems. So we don't always want to move and collect gems, right? We can't always move forward. So before we move forward, we should maybe check if we can move forward, okay? So in here, we might want to have a check and say, if we're not blocked, then we can move forward. Then we can move forward. So I'm going to put this in here, okay? So if we're not blocked, then we can move forward and keep collecting gems. Uh, but what if we are blocked? What if we are blocked? Then we want to turn around. We don't want to move and collect gems, right? So we could do this like this and say else turn around. Where turn around, we're going to have to write that function here. I'll write this up at the top. Funk turn around is just going to be a turn right and another turn right. Okay, now we can try that and let's see if that works. So here, let's check before we run this and let's say, uh, let's walk through this code. So as long as our gem counter is less than seven, we're going to check and see if we're blocked, if we're not blocked. If we're not blocked, we're going to move and collect gems, but if we are blocked, we're going to turn around. Okay, so let's try that. That seems like it's a, a good way to go. Okay, so he's checking. Uh, gem counter is less than seven. He's not blocked, so he moves and collects gems. Not blocked, move and collect gems. But he is blocked, so he turns around. And new gems have popped up. I'm going to keep walking backwards. Check, is he blocked? He is, so he turns around. He's not blocked, so he can move and collect gems. Okay, turn around, collect, move and collect gems. We've only got a couple more here. Sixth gem, seventh gem, and now he's checking and saying, as long as I'm, uh, my gem counter is less than seven, but it is seven, so he can celebrate and say uh, he wins there. Okay, good. Um, I want to see if we can write this a slightly different way. I like this, this is fine, but what if we were to say, it's flip this around. We can do this logic in reverse order, right? We can say if we are blocked, if we are blocked, then we want to turn around. So I'm going to cut this out of here, cut, and put that in here. This is just to show you that there are other ways to do things. Uh, then I'm going to end this if statement here. 
and say, if we are blocked, then I'm going to turn around. And after I turn around, I know it should be OK to move and collect gems, right? It should be OK to move and collect gems at this point, because I've just turned around. And in fact, uh, I can, uh, and even if we're not blocked, we can also move and collect gems. So this is another way we could do that. Uh, so let's just look at this real quick before we run this. This says, as long as our gem counter is not equal to 7 or less than 7, first we're going to check if we're blocked. If we are, we're going to turn around. And then in either case, if we're blocked or not blocked, uh, we're just going to keep moving and collecting gems. Remember, because if we are blocked, we're going to turn around first and then do move and collect gems. So that's another way to do this. So let's try running it this time. We'll run this uh, stepping through our code to watch what happens. OK, two gems in front of us. We're not blocked. So we move and collect gems. Works well. We're not blocked, so we move and collect gems. This time we will be blocked, so we turn around first. Then we call move and collect gems, which collects the gem, and then moves forward. This is going great. We're going to call move and collect gems because we're not blocked. Still not blocked, so we'll call move and collect gems. Still not blocked. Move and collect gems. The next time we will be blocked here, so we'll call turn around, and then we'll call move and collect gem. Here's our turn around. Now we come back into the while loop, move and collect gems. Great. We have three more to collect. Not blocked, so we move and collect gems. Still not blocked, so we move and collect gems. Still not blocked, so we call move and collect gems. The next time we will be blocked. And here we're blocked, so we turn around. It's just a turn right and a turn right. And then immediately after we call move and collect gems, which will be our seventh gem. Okay, so when we come back into the while loop, we check if gem counter less than seven. No, it's not. It's equal to seven. So we're done and we celebrate. Okay, nice. Uh, what we did here, remember, is we started off at the beginning by declaring a variable gem counter and initializing, giving it an initial value of zero because gem counter is going to represent how many gems we currently have, and at the beginning that's zero. Then we wrote two functions to help us out, abstract ideas about turning around, and uh, a simple one that just says check if we're on a gem, if we are, collect it, and then move. Okay, and then inside our while loop, we just keep wandering back and forth in this channel, collecting gems until our gem counter is not less than seven. So when it's equal to seven, it will stop. But as long as it's less than seven, the things we're going to do in there is check if we're blocked. And if we are, we turn around and then we move and collect gems in either case. Okay. All right, uh, good job everybody. I hope this is all uh, becoming uh, fairly second nature to you. If it's not, remember as always, uh, it's good. put it away for a couple of days, come back, think about the solution we did here, and see if you can recreate something similar or even better. If you come up with something you like even better or you wanna talk about your solution and compare it to ours or compare it to other folks, go ahead and uh, leave a comment uh, below in the video uh, comment section, and we'll all discuss it. Okay? All right, we'll see you next time.